Van Diathevan was seriously considering whether to jump to the ground without getting caught in the dog's mouth, or whether to climb over the wall again. At the same time, he also looked closely to see if anyone was hiding in the nearby trees. A white cloth seemed to be visible behind a tree. I remembered hearing the man's laughter mixed with the dog's barking just before. What if some human actually disappeared? A man? Many people? Jumping in without knowing it can be overwhelming. Even if it escapes from a dog's mouth, it can still be caught by humans. Alvarcadian's face seemed to be visible on the wall when viewed from the top of the palace. Is that Vaishnava tired of waiting in the Ayanur temple and comes here to play with the dog, what? Calling everything goes, Vaishnava. Vaishnava. What is this fun? He said. Again there was a sound of laughter, it is not a self-righteous voice. Therefore, it is better to climb the wall again and descend into the palace. There is always a way to escape or tunnel into the welcome pitfalls of a large predator. After a little begging from Manamegali again, the money will go away. If not, you have to earn the favor of the young queen of Pavur. She who has never betrayed herself will betray her now. Again there was a sound of laughter, it is not a self-righteous voice. Therefore, it is better to climb the wall again and descend into the palace. There is always a way to escape or tunnel into the welcome pitfalls of a large predator. After a little begging from Manamegali again, the money will go away. If not, you have to earn the favor of the young queen of Pavur. She who has never betrayed herself will betray her now. Again there was a sound of laughter, it is not a self-righteous voice. Therefore, it is better to climb the wall again and descend into the palace. There is always a way to escape or tunnel into the welcome pitfalls of a large predator. After a little begging from Manamegali again, the money will go away. If not, you have to earn the favor of the young queen of Pavur. She who has never betrayed herself will betray her now. Van Diathevan started to climb again the way he came down. The dog jumped even higher and barked. Laughter was heard again. A figure emerged from the cover of the tree with a wand in its hand. Van Diadeva came to know that he was God. Devaralan came near the place where Van Diadeva was hanging on the wall. Father. Your life is too bad. He said. That's what you know. Why are you coming to me again? Van Diathevan asked. You can't escape this time. Saying that, Devarala pointed at the work Van Diathevan in his hand. Van Diathevan realized his precarious position. How can he who hangs half on the wall fight against the one who pokes through the fence from below? If you jump and try to escape, a hound is lurking above. God, beware. Remember the order of your mistress, the Rani of Pavur. Didn't the Rani tell you not to do anything to me? Devaralan laughed a ghostly laugh and said, Pavuvur Rani is not my mistress. No town queen is my mistress. Padarakali Durga Parmswari is my mistress. He said. My family deity is also Durga Parameshwari. It was by her grace that I escaped from a burning ship in the middle of the sea. If you touch me, Durga will kill you. Van Diathevan said. If it is true that you are a devotee of Durga, now I must do one thing. Only then will I not kill you. Said Devaralan. What to do? Tell your dog to go away first. A valiant Vaishnava has come this way. I will leave you alone if you consent to seek him out. Why capture him? Van Diathevan said. For that I have vowed to sacrifice a heroic Vaishnava to Goddess Durga. Said Devaralan. At this time, the small plant that Van Diathevan was hanging on the wall started moving by the roots. Van Diathevan thought how to jump over the neck of Devarala without getting caught in the end of the fence and said, That valiant Vaishnava is my dear friend. I will never betray him. Sacrifice me in his stead. He said. Then fall prey to this trap now. Devaralan pointed at Van Diadeva who had lifted his work. Van Diadevan left the plant and jumped under the edge of the fence, catching it and jumping down. Molin fell to the ground as he jumped. Devarala overcame the shock and got to work. At that time, 
a figure came running from behind and hit Devarala on the head with a stick in his hand. Lord Vandiyathava fell down on him. The dog pounced on his master's attacker. All Alwarkadayan was willing to do that too. He spread his upper cloth and put it on the dog's head. The dog was blind for a few seconds. At that moment Vaishnava tied the dog to a tree by throwing the wild vine which he had prepared around its neck. By this time Vandiyadeva threw the king off him and got up. Devaralan was knocked unconscious by a single blow of Vaishnava. Both grabbed some more wild vines and tied his hands and feet. Then Vandiyathevan took the work and Alvarkadayan left with his staff. The three sides of the Sambhavariyar mansion, except the entrance, were covered with forest for a long distance. Once you get into it, it is difficult to come out. So Vandiyadeva and Alvarkadayan rushed to the side of the wall. Alvarkadayan said while walking quickly, I thought you were smart. Now I know that I was wrong. You mean the rush into the tunnel? Do you know how many terrible mysteries I've discovered through that? Vandiyathevan said. Leave it aside do you agree to find a Vaishnava? When Devarala asked, what is the point of saying let it be and getting lost? Why risk it in vain? Said Vaishnava. All Sahaveza Das Han. Vandiyathevan said. Whose company are you talking about? You don't think I ever told you to make such a mistake? I'm not telling you sir. I'm telling Pawnee's lover. After seeing him and getting used to him, I don't have the heart to lie. To save life? Are you really that sad? Not only that, but I know that you are hiding somewhere nearby. If you believe that what you heard from the God King saying that I will hold you is true. Would you have come to help me in this time of danger? Father. Your intellect is great. No doubt about it. In fact, I was very anxious to hear what you were going to answer to the question posed by Devarala. See? I was right in assuming that you were a suspicious animal. Besides, I never say anything unfriendly, even a word of mouth, regardless of the benefit it may bring. But how did you come here after saying I'm waiting at the Ayanur temple? If I had come back by the tunnel, would I have been shocked to see you? Vandiyathevan said. I doubt you came back alive if you came back through the tunnel. The conspirators entered shortly after you entered the tunnel. I figured you'd be smart enough to come back some other way, and probably jump over the wall here. Did you come here with that in mind? So there is no other option but to run. Devaralan was also running continuously. He couldn't catch me because of the thick forest. After a while it seemed that he did not follow me. Thinking that he had given up hunting, I intended to leave the jungle for Rajapat. A hut was seen in the distance. A small lamp was flickering in it. I approached the hut thinking that I could ask Rajapat for directions. I peered from a distance, good luck. Devarala was standing at the door of the cottage. A girl and a dog stood beside him. Devarala said something to the girl and took the dog and left again. The dog barked in the direction I was standing. So the risk is even higher. I gave up my intention of going to Rajapat and ran through the jungle. I could guess where they were coming from the dog barking so often. The brain was working while running. It is impossible to spend the whole night wandering in the forest. They will come and catch you anyway. It is not easy to deal with a god with a sword in hand and a hound with teeth in his mouth at the same time. At that time, the wall of the great mansion was visible. I thought that if I climbed the wall and jumped in, I could manage somehow, so I climbed. At that moment I saw you running on the upper floor of the palace, and knowing that you were running to jump out of the wall, I jumped down again. We believed that together we could defeat God and his dog. In the meantime, I heard the barking of the dog and climbed up the tree next to me. The dog and Devaralan approached the tree I was climbing. By that time you had come down from the wall and it was as if you had caught the eye of God. He took the dog and approached the landing. You know what happened after that? Vaishnava. What is your impression of the strength of destiny? Vandiyathevan asked. What is this question? Why did you suddenly lose your mind on fate? 
They say that when everyone is born, Brahma writes in his head, what will happen to tomorrow, do you believe that, or not? No. I don't believe in fate. If we believe in fate completely, then it would be meaningless to pray to Paranthaman, wouldn't it? What the Alvars have said. Let the Alvars say something. I have complete faith in fate. I believe that everything happens according to fate. Otherwise I would not have escaped today. Father. You didn't escape because of destiny, you escaped because of Maddie's help. Not at all, my mind had led me into peril of the abyss, fate had shored me up from it. While they were talking like this, they came across the forest. The front gate of Kadampur Palace was visible from there. It was also known that there was only one Alalegala lamb. Palyavetarayar's elephant, horse and entourage were approaching the gate from outside. Sambhavarayar and his entourage were waiting to be welcomed at the lavishly decorated palace gate. Hundreds of torches lit up the night. Bells, trumpets, horns, strings and clappers rang together. All were Kadayan grabbed Vandiyathevan's hand and pulled him, Come. Let's go, someone is going to see us. He said. No one will see this side, even if they do, my fate will save me. Shall we not see the sight of the great predator coming down on the elephant? Is that all? I want to see if Nandini, Queen of Bhavur, comes with him on an elephant, or on a Madhupalak. Brother. Don't think that fate will always be in your favor. Mayamahini comes in the form of an umbrella and overturns you. Vaishnava, I'm not the one who gets carried away like that. There are other people for that. A majestic elephant came and stood at the palace gate. From its top descended the great reaper. Ila Iirani of Pavuvar also came down after him. Oh! This time Ila Iirani did not come to Mudupalak. She brought it openly. All Workadians said. I just wanted to know that, now let's go, Vandiyathevan followed. But now All Workadian was not in such a hurry to follow, and remained standing still. Pavuvar Ila Iirani was looking at Nandini without batting an eye. Nandini looked back at him either by accident or by his psychic power. She looked closely to see the face of Alwarkadian peeking out from among the dark trees. A look of panic spread across her face immediately. The great savior noticed the change in Ila Yarani's face. He also glanced once more in the direction she looked. Two figures were hiding in the dark shadows of the overgrown trees. He immediately said something to Sambhuvarayar's ear. Sambhuvarayar ordered something to two of his soldiers. Palyavetare and Ilayarani entered through the palace gate amid loud instrumental chants. At the same time two horsemen entered the forest surrounding the palace wall. They drove the horses into the forest with difficulty. A long distance away, no one seems to be there. They almost crossed the forest and came to an open field which was plain beyond. Brother. There's no one in the forest. It's the old man's will. Said one of them. Just then a dog came howling towards them. Brother. Do you know when a dog howls? Asked the other. If someone dies, it's going to hurt. Said the first speaker. Demons and devils will be angry even if they see things like that. Said another. Did he think you were the devil just by looking at you? Or what? No, brother. It thinks you're a monster. At this moment, they both looked up in shock as they heard a horrible ghostly laugh above their heads. Above the two men's heads were two Vethalas sitting on two tree branches. The two Vittles slapped the two players on the cheek, grabbed their necks and pushed the net down. Then, those evil Vittles mounted their horses and rushed through the forest into the field.